Um, this time around, I'm going to try to do some discussion on what's going on. <clears throat> I'm going to be using my uh, Wizard Black Widow size zero zero. Um, I got this from Wizard uh, Graphics, Steve Kosheska, which I don't know if that's how I pronounce your name. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. Um, and I'm going to be using one shot that I keep in these nice little bottles. It's just easy access for me. So we have a dry brush and uh, we're going to start fresh. I'm just going to do some stuff here with purple and blue. And uh, please forgive me if I don't respond to the comments. I can't really see if you guys are talking. <clears throat> so, I'm going to try to mix up a little bit of a lighter purple. Or at least one that you can see off of this black background. And I think that is... Proper purple is the name of it. I'm going to add a little bit of white. And I plan on lightening that as I go. And get some more contrast after a little while. So right now I'm just loading the brush up with paint. And I'm dipping in mineral spirits. To reduce the paint some into a uh, a usable kind of mixture. Now the ultimate goal with this video later will be to put it on YouTube. Uh, I had some people ask for a little how to so hopefully I don't mess this up. And if I do I'll just wipe it off and not upload it. It's that easy. Alright, so I'm palleted pretty good. And I'm going to get started with just some kind of a simple scroll. I'm going to try to just make it shoot out that way. So, always put your pinky down. Try to brace it with your other fingers. Do something like this. Go around on the outside, cut through it. Push down, lift back up, we'll do something similar on the way out here, down, and a long tail. Now, I'm going to try to fix that tail a little bit. Now this is a pretty new brush. So it's not really broken, but it feels nice for being brand new. Alright. Now sometimes you get these little bubbles. Um, that might be just from me uh, mixing it up too fast. I'll just kind of go over them. They usually go away regardless, but I like to try to flatten them out if I can. Now for any of the uh, professionals out there, if you, in case you're watching, let me know if you see me doing some stupid stuff. Um, I've only been doing this for a year and a half, so I'm still uh, very much learning. So I think I'm going to do a second, a second tail just to follow this one. Push down. I'm just going to follow it out a little bit further.
All right. Now let me reduce this paint a little bit more. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this line back up at the very point, kick it around the other way to kind of fill up that space. There are a million different ways you can take this and kind of figuring out what looks good or what doesn't. I mean, it's all subjective. But uh, if you see enough people's stuff, you kind of start to figure it out. So I'm going to try to kick around like this and see if I don't end up in that hole up there. Kind of end up right back inside of it. Oh, my camera moved, you guys. I don't know if I'm still where I need to be. I'll try to take that down a little better. Try to keep this thing from moving. <clears throat> now, this is just the practice piece, but if anybody wants to bid on it, I am very happy to uh, send it to you. If you want to shoot me a little $5, $10, $20, whatever you want, I'll take it. But if I mess up, you guys get to see me wipe it off. Alright, so I'm going to add some more white to that and try to get me a lighter... A lighter purple and this is gonna be the start to my contrast from what I could tell with this style um, it looks cool to me if you got some nice contrasting colors multiple colors because when you go to do the extra loops the other doodads and whatnot um, they stand out a lot more if uh, if you use different colors or ones that kind of progress all right so now I have a much lighter purple this is kind of a uh, lavender at this point and See what we could do here. I'm gonna pull the line out this way and maybe bring it back in. Matter of fact, I think I'll do that. Well, let's just pull it out and see what happens. Start off just the tip, push down, and drag it on out. a series of uh, little teardrops that kind of come out here and go around like so and those will set me up for kind of a something to do in front of them afterwards so when you do this stuff uh, I try to think of what the next move will be afterwards um, but it doesn't always work out I think I might go back this way with this one. Let's see here. The nice thing about these brushes is you don't have to spin them in your hand. Just let them rock out. They work really well. The difference between these and a regular pinstriping brush is the round ferrule. And it kind of gives you the advantage of just making the moves without having to spin the brush, which I still have a hard time with. Now, normally I would move this around, but I have it all taped down to where uh, 
I know I'm still in the frame. So I'm just going to kind of do these backwards. Uh, I'm going to start real fine. A little shaky. Push down. And then do the next few in... Uh, I'm going to try to cut them in half. So this one's going to be half that size. This one's going to be half that size. And then just dots along the way. Now those, you know, I'll be able to pull them out later with a different color. Which I'm going to probably am going to end up with some blue and maybe orange. <clears throat> now I see an opportunity here. I have an open space, so I might just drag something out of that center there. And, uh... You know, you feel free to try to cross over lines and such, but do it in an organized way to where it looks good still. So I think I'm going to do, actually I might just do a teardrop shape here. So, maybe just follow it up. Now, I'm probably over over paletting because I'm trying to figure out what I want to do next. I could imagine a lot of these uh, professional guys already got it all figured out, but I do not. So I think I'm going to pull this out and then do uh, something that goes kind of upwards. So I'm actually going to I'm actually going to do the top part first. And I'm going to try to go like this. So I'm just going to go something like that. And I'm going to draw the stem. Now, it doesn't look too fluent to me, but whatever. We'll rock it out and see what happens. Maybe I'll put another one next to it. And we'll let this split off kind of after the fact. So now we got two of them kind of going out. Hopefully you guys can see all that. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna add a little of this color over here. So I'm gonna stand it for. Can't do everything sitting down. We'll do a couple of these. All right. So I'm done with that color. I'm going to clean my stuff off with uh, lacquer thinner first kind of breaks up the paint wipe it off I like to use these shop towels because they don't leave any lint and then I got my mineral spirits over here just move it around some on that now this is not like a full-blown cleaning of the brush, this is just me getting the paint off. And considering that the next color is going to be blue, uh, the purple wouldn't affect it too much. Now if I was going from something like red to white, well then you might want to clean it off completely. 
So I'm going to do this uh, process blue. I might lighten that up a little bit. Put that right there. Okay. My phone just went off. All right, mix all that up. So this is a pretty contrasting color compared to the other purples. And it's a lot brighter. So it should show up better. So I'm pretty comfortable with the way it feels. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of this blue. And I think I'll do something similar to this purple down here. Or I just do some teardrop shapes going out. I'm doing them backwards because uh I can't really get behind it. There's a wall there, but I think we'll be alright. I'm going to try to pull some that go in front of these out this way and kind of let them curl over the original purple. We'll see how it works out. I got the air on pretty good in here, so it's drying up a little. I'm going to add a little dash of blue in there because there's a nice open space. Oh, maybe I'll do two of them. Do a big teardrop here to fill in that spot. Make sure there's no dust. That's my blue. I'm trying to think if there's any other spots I'd like to add to that. Mm. I think we're good with that. So now I clean it off again. And I'm going to try to go to something like an orange, kind of reddish orange color. And we'll see if. See if that was oh, phone call. Not now. Okay. All right.
Alright, we're going to do some orange with a little bit of red in it. And we'll see how that works out. Now that is going to be very contrasting, which is the goal. Doesn't always work out, but that's what practice is for. Test things out, see how you like them. That way you don't mess up on somebody's motorcycle or truck or car. Now this is pretty, this is kind of like a pumpkin orange. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try to make it a little bit more red. Alright, so I got a kind of uh, vermilion, I think it's called, kind of color. Pretty much an orange red. <clears throat> now we're going to try to throw some out this way and see what happens. So, actually, first off, I'm going to run a little a couple doodads here. Kind of going backwards. And then these are going to go forward like those did. Oops. Now if a big white fluffy cat jumps up here, it's going to be all over. He might do it. Any, any cat owners out there know what's up. I'm going to do one of these here, over here. It's always hard to find a spot to put your damn pinky. Maybe I could pull another one of these. Outwards. I'm going to try to connect it to this. Let's see how it looks.
probably could throw another color in here. It'd be all right. Whoops, I lost my brush. Now I always try to keep my handle clean because I'm not always aware of where I'm putting my hand. So the less I have on my fingertips, the better. I'm just trying to think of where I could add some more to this. I see an opportunity right there for something. Maybe I'll let it go around. So. Here I have a chance I could tie this in with a little wrap around. And we'll see how that works out. Now, I don't know if this thing's going to have a beginning or an end, but I'm just going to go ahead and wrap around here a little bit. There's the fucking cat. Hey, Bubba. I'm doing a video. Come on. Get out of the way. Alright, so I kind of tied it in a little bit. Now these wraparounds, they usually have, you know, a tail or some sort of something that goes around, but I don't always do it. Sometimes I just like to add them. Like it begins and ends behind the entire piece. When you do these, I try to reduce it less than I normally would. Or else you could run into a situation where you're picking up the other paint. Now all of this is still pretty wet. And I think I'm going to call it quits. I'm going to put a little signature down here. It's not little, but whatever. And I'll show you guys what it looks like from the front there. Ta-da! So I don't know how long that took me. Uh, I definitely was going a little faster than I normally do. But uh, I'm trying to work on my speed. Um, I figure I've only done one motorcycle show, so if I go to do more, um, I need to get my speed up. So that was done with the Black Widow. Wizard Black Widow from Mac Brush Company, size 00. zero. Um, I suggest you try these out. You know, not every brush is for everybody, but uh, I like them. They're a little bit more snappy than, uh, let's say, the Kafka. Not as snappy as the Dragonfly, which is kind of a bit too much for me. All right, you guys. Thank you for watching. It's getting late. I'll see you.